uh, I think like most British people, it's a story we grew up with. Uh, it's really in our bones, but Emma and I made a, a faithful voyage uh, on a friend's uh, small boat uh, across to Dunkirk about 20 years ago. And um, it was a very difficult crossing. And in taking part in that, when people weren't dropping bombs on us, we weren't heading into a war zone, I think uh, our admiration for the people who did that in 1940 and went to help with the evacuation was cemented and, and enhanced. And I think it's just a story that I think we were both surprised hadn't been told in modern cinema. Yeah, the story, broadly speaking, is divided into three points of view, land, sea, and air. Uh, and it's really an attempt to stay in a human scale of storytelling, a subjective form of storytelling, but get across, as the storylines come together, get across the bigger picture of what happened during the evacuation. The northern European weather in the summer, I would say. Um, it was extremely challenging. You know, we were on, on a, a beach where we had sand being blown at us. We were on the water that was very choppy. I mean, it was, you know, it was pretty relentless. But, um, you know, it, it was hard not to think about the fact that it was that much harder for the people who actually went through it. So, Well, I mean, first of all, Chris always likes to shoot as much as possible for real. So. Um, we were attaching IMAX cameras to the wings of Spitfires. We were, you know, shooting with real ships and destroyers, and, and it, you know, it's a huge, huge movie. Well, I'm hoping uh, an intense and suspenseful experience. It's a great story that people may feel they know, but there's probably more to it than perhaps they're familiar with. Uh, first and foremost, we want to create uh, a very engaging entertainment and, and a really immersive experience.